Hello and welcome to the 11 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shuk Hamed. Under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Charity Organization, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the RCO held the annual Ramadan meeting for the organization's affiliates. The event was attended by the Minister of Information Affairs, Ali bin Mohammed Al Ramehi, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Under Secretary for International Affairs, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and Kuwait's Ambassador to Bahrain and Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, Sheikh Azam Barak Al Sabah. On this occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the honorary president of the RCO, to all orphans and their families. He also valued directives and support of His Majesty the King to provide high quality services to the organization's affiliates, adding that all employees in the organization exert their utmost efforts to realize this vision of His Majesty the King. He also urged students to work hard to contribute to the development of the kingdom under the wise leadership of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. The Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, congratulated His Majesty the King, the wise leadership and the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on the mixed martial arts team's achievement of one gold and three bronze medals in the Asian Open Championships for amateurs held in Singapore. The championships were organized by the International Mixed Martial Arts Federation. His Highness Sheikh Khalid affirmed that this result reflects the achievements of the Bahraini sports in various participation and championships thanks to the support that the youth and sports sector receives from the wise leadership which has contributed to the development of sports and had a clear impact on the athletes to achieve honorable results and raise the flag of Bahrain high in various sports forums. His Highness also praised the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Nasser to achieve the vision of the wise leadership to promote sports in Bahrain through effective programs aimed to develop all sports. He also expressed pride in the team's achievements in the championship. As a reaffirmation of the kingdom's stance regarding Qatar's interventions in Bahrain's internal affairs, which aim to overthrow the government, Bahrain International will play a recording of the phone calls that took place in March 2011 between the advisor of Qatar's Amir Hamad bin Khalid Khalifa al atiyah and the so-called Hassan Sultan, a terrorist, traitor, and one of the leaders of the terrorist Dawa party, which played an insightful role in the mid-1990s. He was also a member of the parliament. He fled to Lebanon in 2011 in fear of being arrested. He is now staying in Lebanon and is being sponsored by the terrorist Hezbollah. Terrorist Hassan Sultan frequently visits Iraq and receives money from Hezbollah to spend on wanted and fugitive Bahrainis. He is a member of the dissolved Al Wafaq Islamic Society, whose members had been hosted by Al Jazeera Channel a number of times and whose news were constantly spread. This affirms that Al Jazeera Channel is not an independent channel but is closely linked to the policy of Qatari government. In the first phone call, Hamad al Atiyah affirmed that there were no Qatari combat forces within the Peninsula Shield who have operated in Bahrain and that they were only there for monitoring purposes. He explained that the law of the GCC compels Qatar to participate in the Peninsula Shield with two Qatari officers. Uh, 
Şeyh Hasan. Uyuyak Şeyh Hanım. Alo. Ya Allah. السلام عليكم السلام عليكم يا شيخ اهلا وسهلا ومرحبا ابو خليفه اسف على الزعل. انا ضربت لك على الخط هذاك ما حد يسيده تسلم تسلم ابو خليفه تفضل امر ما يامر عليك عدو انا بس استفسرت عن هذا درع الجزيره ما في قوات قطريه اول شيء بعدين في اثنين ضباط مراقبين هذا حسب قانون درع الجزيره قانون درع الجزيره يلزمنا بالمشاركه في دول المجلس انت عارف طيب احنا هالمره تحفظنا وما شاركنا كقوه طيب بس في ضبط في ضباط اثنين من من قطر ضباط اثنين مراقبين هذا في اشياء تلزمنا غصب طويل العمر ابو خليفه الان الناس بتتعامل يعني انا ارجو ان تاخذون هذا الموضوع في الحسبان الناس بتتعامل مع القوات كقوات احتلال شيخ انا مع كلامك واحنا يعني انا هالكلام يعني يجبني ما اقول لك احنا الموضوع دي احنا كغطر متحفظين عليه بسبة علاقة الأخوة والمواطنة احنا شيء دي متحفظين عليه ورفضنا المشاركة انت عارف كقانون درع جزيرة يلزم كل الدول في المشاركة احنا ضغطنا على أنفسنا ما شاركنا كقوة حاولنا ان ما المسألة ما تطور الى قوات والى طيران يوصل هناك والى والى طويل العمر انا ما مطلع على القانون بالتفصيل بس القانون اليوم البرلمان الكويتي عنده مشكلة بيستجوب 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 الحكومة على هذا الموضوع أنا معاك يا شيخ أنا معاك وهذا صار واقع الحين أنت اشتبيني عن قل حق رئيس الوزراء قبل يطلع ولا بعد شوي تبي تكلمني تعطينا أبو 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 خليفة بس نص ساعة على ساعة إلا ربع لأن تعرف يعني هذا الموضوع مو بهالسهولة يمكن أنه المعارضة قاعدة في اجتماعات والبيت الداخلي الشيء قاعد في اجتماعات فيعني تعرف الموضوع يحتاج الى 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 بلوره آه. اذا تبلور شيء انا اتصل عليكم ابو خليفه انا بلور. انا انتظر منك تليفون على لحظه تسلم طويل اذا الامر بعد ما يجي بكره الليل رئيس الوزراء ومع سعود الفيصل ويقعدون عند الملك وتبلور بعض الامور اذا الوضع تطلب انا يمكن بكره اجي واجي اشوفك ولا اشوف الشيخ عيسى بعد ما اشوف شي يوصلون حق الموضوع مع الملك والحكومه هناك نتشرف يا ابو خليفه حتى انتم اذا قالوا لكم من تب تبوني انا اجي تبون يعني رئيس الوزراء يوصلكم هناك شو اللي تشوفون انتم؟ احنا والله نشوف نشوف وجهكم الكريم لنا الشرف نشوف معالي الشيخ حمد ايضا احنا بالخدمه احنا نرحب يعني بلدنا احنا ضيوف من اهل البلد ما في شك يعني تاكد احنا ما عندنا احنا نزع ذيله ذيله ولا ذيله تاكد 100% اقول لك اياها بكل امانه تسلم يا خليفه تسلم طويل العمر وسلم لي على الشيخ عيسى وعلى الجماعه كلهم والله ان شاء الله يطمنهم في بلادهم والله يفك تسلم. الازمه ان شاء الله وتعالى يا الله يا الله سلم غاليكم سلم غاليكم ابو خليفه الله يطول عمرك تسلم الله يسلمك مع السلامه in the second phone call, the Bahraini terrorist updated the Qatari Emir's advisor about the latest developments in Bahrain, particularly the announcement of martial law, saying that he predicts a flood of blood. Al Atiyah replied by saying that the Al Jazeera channel will broadcast whatever terrorist Hassan Sultan wants to portray about the situation. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum, Khalifa. Shalom. Allah yitawwal amrak. طيب اكيد متابع تطورات اي والله ف انا اتكلم وياك ابو خليفه طلبت مني ان ان انقل اي شيء بالنسبه الى قوات الامن واعلان حاله واعلان حاله الطوارئ احنا نتوقع سيل من الدماء احنا ما عندنا مانع نطلع حتى في الجزيره الحين هاي رسالتنا رسالتنا ان 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 ما يجري اليوم هو بامضاء خليجي توصل بس انا ابغي الغرى اللي الحين عقب ما كلمتك انا اللي صارت فيها مشاكل وش لان احنا ما عندنا مانع كل قرار كل قرار خلاص نعم. ما في ما عاد في حمايه للشيعه في البحرين ما عاد في حمايه للشيعه في البحرين وهذا صوتنا وصلناه الى مرجعياتنا في النجف وفي قم وفي لبنان نعم لان خلاص ما في اي غطاء اليوم لا سياسي ولا ولا غيره اللي قاعد يصير معلي بس انا شيخ شيخ نعم نعم انا بس عبيد منك شوي لحظه لو سمحت 
الحين الظهر الحين منتشرين هالبلطجيه ولا الجيش نزل ولا الشرطه لو توضح لي شوي البلطجيه قوات القوات اللي عندهم سلاح دي لباس مدني يجوبون القرى اثنين الجيش طبعا نازل بعد اعلان القوات وانا انا قدامي قاعد اشوف انا اكلمك من من مبنى المقرنة وقدامي قاعد اشوف وقوات الامن ايضا تمارس كمحور ثالث تمارس نفس الدور شيء حسن من من الشخص اللي انا اقدر اخلي حد يتصل فيه وياخذ منه المعلومات هذه كان لا حتى للجزيره ما عندنا مانع أه انت يكون باسم ثاني لان لا انت ما في مشكلة. ايه ما في انا عطني 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 بس دقيقتين ثلاثه ارتب الموضوع ابو خليف ارد عليه خبر ويتصلون من الان الان عطني دقيقتين ثلاثه وارد عليك خبر اوكي ماشي تسلم ابو خليف مرحبا In the third phone call, terrorist Hassan Ali gave the advisor of the Qatari Emir the number of Khalil Al Marzouk to talk to the Al Jazeera channel as part of a campaign to spread chaos in Bahrain. Hello. Salam, Abu Khalifa. Yeah, hello, Abu. The number of the person who can talk to the Al Jazeera is in the location. أو يعني تبون ممكن نائب الشيخ نائب خليل مرزوق اللي هو كان النائب الاول لرئيس مجلس النواب يمكن اي شخص ثاني يعني بس اللي انت تشوفه يعني اخذوا رقم اخذوا رقم هذا النائب خليل مرزوق الان هو ما بيقدر كان عنده اجتماع في السفاره الامريكيه ما عليه كم هو رقمه؟ ثلاثه تسعه تسعه سبعة. إيه. شوف على كل حال احنا بيكون لنا موقف مغاير ما عندنا مشكله بس احنا نبغي تعاون معلومات صحيحه اكيده ما طلعنا بكره قدام الناس يعني تخبرنا تهورنا في شيء ها ما في مشكله ابو خليل ويا ريت في اشياء مصوره بالتاريخ يعني تاريخ احنا مستعدين مستعدين نعم انا بارك الله فيك ان شاء الله نعم ان شاء الله اوكي الله يسلمك In the fourth phone call, terrorist Hassan Ali gave the advisor of the Qatar Emir the phone number of another person to talk to the Al Jazeera channel and to keep the channel updated about the campaign to stir chaos in Bahrain. Hello. Hello, Abu Khalifa. Yeah, مرحبا الله يطول عمرك. لا خذ رقم أخون طويل العمر رقم الشخص بالنسبة إلى المعلومات تأخذون هذا الرقم هذا الشخص بحيث يقدرون تواصلون ويا القناة يقدر تواصل ويا يزودها أول بأول المعلومات الدقيقة وحتى بال بالأشرطة إذا كل الأشرطة كل وثائق موجودة ثلاثة آه هذا الرقم بدون فتح الخط، فتح الخط 973 عندي انا. ايه رقم فتح الخط اسم الشخص اسمه سيف طاهر. الحين نتصل بسيف ولا بالاخ خليل؟ اتصل بطاهر الموسوي الان. هذا اللي هو سيف طاهر ها؟ لا لا سيف طاهر، اتصل بطاهر الموسوي هو هذا اعلامي ومعلومات دقيقه عنده اول باول. فيقدر يزودها يزودها انا بعطيك خبر ترتيبنا ان شاء الله شلون تسلم تسلم شكرا The Representatives Council expresses its complete rejection and disapproval of the interferences in the internal affairs of the kingdom by the Qatari regime that aims to threaten safety and security in Bahrain and to damage its social fabric and national unity. The Council also affirmed that the revealed facts and information of the unfortunate events of 2011 is a conspiracy and not a civil movement incited by Iran and supported by the Qatari regime. The Council stresses that there must be a Qatari-Irani scheme against the kingdom which exploited the Arab Spring to announce the Islamic Republic under the guardianship of the Islamic jurists during the event and carried out a failed coup attempt led by terrorists in coordination and support of Qatar and Iran. 
The council asserts that these actions are not unexpected from the Iranian regime, but they are unexpected from the Qatari regime that have disregarded good neighborliness, joint destiny, and the charter of the GCC. The council demands trying all those who participated in the call had been mentioned in it or committed the crime of threatening the safety and security of the kingdom to protect regional countries and their people from terrorism and its supporters. The council reiterates its form national stance and its call to the people of the kingdom to support the wise leadership in facing all that threatens the kingdom and in approving all procedures that preserve the national security, expressing gratitude to the efforts of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Egypt and all brotherly and friendly countries. The Shura Council strongly condemns and rejects the Qatari regime's intervention in the policies of the Kingdom of Bahrain and its direct involvement in cooperation and coordination with terrorists during the 2011 events in the country in order to create chaos and destabilize the situation in the kingdom. This confirms that there is a Qatar-Iranian plan and joint agendas between the two parties targeted the Kingdom of Bahrain through the implementation of a series of provocative actions to undermine the security and stability of the kingdom. The Shura Council affirms that hostile practices against the Kingdom of Bahrain have not ceased since then. However, it is surprising that these practices were issued by a sister country that has many denominators of the, with the Kingdom of Bahrain, especially history, common destiny and unity of goal, under the umbrella of the Gulf Cooperation Council, and to establish contact with the terrorist groups and extremist elements and to host them and establish close relationships with Iran, thus hosting a threat of security to the states of the region as a whole. The Shura Council stresses that interference in Bahrain's affairs in its various forms and prejudice of the sovereignty of the kingdom is rejected by any party. It affirms that Bahrain is committed to fighting terrorism at home and abroad, confronting its supporters with money, arms and training, as well as instigators for the sake of maintaining national security at the preservation of the fabric of Bahraini society. A suspected U.S. drone strike killed two men believed to be Al-Qaeda militants in southern Yemen late yesterday. Residents and local sources said that the strike took place in the Al-Naqba area of the Shabwa province, where residents heard a loud explosion that they say completely destroyed a vehicle carrying armed people. The United States has repeatedly attacked Al-Qaeda with aircraft and unmanned drones in what U.S. officials say is a campaign to wear down the group's ability to coordinate attacks abroad. Shabwa is one of the several provinces in Yemen where Al-Qaeda Arab Peninsula is active. Iraqi forces pose for photographs holding a seized ISIL flag as they pushed further into Mosul's old city today. Iraqi forces took full control of the Al-Shifa district in the western bank of the Tigris River to bid a complete encirclement of ISIL's stronghold in the old city of Mosul. Al-Shifa district houses a medical city, a complex of hospitals further north along the bank of the Tigris to enclose the militant enclave. Iraqi Army's Brigadier General Shikri Shihab said that ISIL had put up a strong resistance, deploring snipers and suicide bombers to impede the forces' advance, but Iraqi forces managed to advance forward with the support of coalition forces. Kurdish forces in Syria said yesterday they planned to push on to the Masakin area of Araqqa, having displaced ISIL from the Al-Sina district. The Syrian Democratic Forces, made up predominantly of Kurdish fighters, have seized territory to the north, east and west of Raqqa in a city of about 200,000 that served as ISIL's base of operations for more than three years. Kurdish fighters patrolling the streets of al Sina district yesterday fired upon what they believed to be a drone operated by the militants. Terrorist ISIL fighters are close to defeat in the twin capitals of the group's territory, Mosul in Iraq and Raqqa in Syria, after nearly three years ruling over millions of people in a wide swath of territory in both countries. Trees. Meanwhile, almost 150 members of a newly instated police force celebrated their graduation near the city of Raqqa today at the conclusion of a U.S.-backed training program. The forces are expected to be deployed in and around Raqqa in the event of ISIL being defeated in the city or forced out of it. The city of about 200,000 has been the base of operations for ISIL, which has claimed responsibility for multiple attacks on civilians across the globe. The U.S.-backed Syrian Democratic Forces, made up predominantly of Kurdish fighters, has seized territory to the north, east and west of Raqqa. Afghanistan's interim defense minister welcomed the decision made by the U.S. government to send some additional 4,000 troops to the country. 
Speaking in Kabul today, Major General Tariq Shah Barami said that the decision was made in consultation with the Afghan government. He added that the mission of the incoming American troops would be to train and advise Afghan forces. According to an official who wasn't authorized to discuss details of the decision publicly and spoke on condition of anonymity, a smaller number would be assigned to counter-terror organizations against the Taliban and ISIL. There would have been almost 2,400 military deaths in Afghanistan since 2001. Three U.S. soldiers were killed and another was wounded in eastern Afghanistan this weekend in an attack claimed by the Taliban. As part of Ramadan community campaign, a collection of Johnny Dar's jeans for refugees were exhibited, dedicating to helping refugees worldwide and are open for public viewing till the 30th of June. More on this report with Yasmin Ibrahim. Jeans for Refugees by Joni Dara featured a display of 65 pairs of jeans as an artistic installation concept at Bahrain's Mada Mall and sold to raise funds for an international rescue committee as part of an annual Ramadan community campaign and a charity fundraiser for supporting refugees worldwide. This is the first country that we're bringing Jeans for Refugees to within the GCC. So we were very passionate actually about bringing it to the region. Um, we felt for many reasons it was really appropriate to have it here and um, Johnny particularly um, had this vision for the display, like the stands as they are. So, you know, they're designed especially for the GCC region to reflect the climate here and the sand and the glass and um, the light. So, um, and, and essentially the climate that a lot of the refugees in the region actually have to endure. This is why we really wanted to have this event um, during Ramadan because we felt that it was so fitting, so appropriate. I mean, people are fasting, they're connecting with the hungry, with the needy. Um, they are also, it's a time of giving, it's a time of thinking of others. And therefore we felt like this is the perfect time to have an event where the focus is helping others, but in a very creative way. So that's what Jeans for Refugees really offers. Jeans for Refugees boldly demonstrates the power of art and fashion to shine a light of hope in the current refugee crisis climate. More than 100 celebrities who have received wide acknowledgement in the field of fashion, art, design, music and sports have joined hands together to promote this event. It's not a matter of um, donating money. It, it, it's the creativity behind uh, making the philanthropic world, world so much um, enjoyable. Uh, and, and I think such an initiative adds a lot of value to the Kingdom of Bahrain because, first of all, being chosen for the first destination to organize such a thing is a big thing, as usual. Uh, now, from it, uh, you're talking about uh, inspiring the other sort of neighboring countries to host such an event. So I think with the turnover that we're going to have tonight, um, I think it will be a moment to remember, let's say, or a night to remember. Bahrain is the first of the GCC countries to host the Jeans for Refugees exhibition, featuring a collection of celebrity jeans that have magically transformed into art pieces to raise money for refugees. The exhibition celebrates the art of giving this Ramadan and is a fresh breeze of hope, showcasing the power of unique art pieces. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. And before we end the news, here is a reminder of the top stories. A phone call between the advisor to the Qatar Amir Hamad Al Atiyah and terrorist Hassan Ali has revealed a plot to spread chaos in Bahrain and broadcast the news on Al Jazeera Channel. 